Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, Best Arc sent me another machine to test out. We got this little guy right here. It's the MiG-145 Gen 9 from Best Arc. So today we're going to go ahead and test it out on a lot of you guys I know are, are doing body work. So maybe you don't want to spend a ton of money on a big expensive machine. You just need a smaller one to get the job done on your project. So this may just fit the bill. So let's go ahead and jump in here. We'll see everything that came in the box and then we're going to get it put together and try it out. All right, let's see what came in the box. So it came with the stick welding lead, uh, the adapter from 220 to 120. This is a dual voltage machine, a strap. You can, uh, I guess, hang it over your shoulder and walk around as you're welding, a instruction manual, uh, some extra contact tips, another roller, feed roller, some Teflon tape, and of course the MIG torch. It's about six and a half feet long, not super long, but the machine weighs like 14 pounds. So I think you just, the idea is it's super portable. You just move it around wherever you go. Um, it also, kind of, they send uh, like a one pound spool of 040 flux core and then 030 solid core. Um, and then the ground lead of course, and then the gas hose if you want to run CO2 or 75, 25 mix. It does not come with a regulator. So you're going to have to pick one up. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, 19, 20, 23 dollars, uh, not much on Amazon. So you can get a regulator fairly cheap. Then you have to get your own bottle, but uh, it does come ready to go for stick or flux core welding. So let's go ahead and uh, put the camera down. We'll zoom in tight on the control panel and we'll show some of the features there. All right, let's go through a few features real quick. So you can select what type of welding you're doing. So you've got TIG, then you got stick. You can hear the fan coming on already. So we'll go back to MIG. And then you can select um, what type of wire you're going to use, what size right here. So we'll go down through and you'll see that it changes the settings for you as you go to different size wire. Now it's also a 2T, 4T machine where if you just click the trigger once, it'll come on and stay on until you click the trigger again. We don't need that on this one. And then you can come over here if you're running flux core or if you're running uh, gas. So we select that between there. And you can see how the settings change as you go through. So this machine actually helps like a beginner out a lot because it's doing a lot of the thinking for you. And also, as you change your setting here for whatever you're welding, you notice they're both changing at the same time where uh, standard like my, my Miller over there, you have to set the voltage and the wire speed at the same time. This one does it for you so it keeps them in sync. That's really good for a beginner. And, and if you want to change it, then all you have to do is push the button and then you can make changes accordingly. So it'll let you fine tune it a little bit. So um, it's, a, it's a really good starter machine to get your feet wet. And this thing only costs $140. I mean, uh, you know, that's super cheap and you really can't go wrong, but we're gonna test that, see if it can weld some 19 gauge and maybe some eighth inch. I've got it set up for flux core right now. So let, uh, let me get all this cleared off and, uh, and we'll get some steel up here and try to do some welding. Okay, before we can do any welding, we need to set up the machine for what the type of welding we're gonna be doing. Since we've got it set up for flux core right now, we need, you see this loose lead right here? That'll go back and forth between these depending on what you're doing. So if you're doing flux core, you'll connect it into the negative and then put your ground lead on the other one which is positive. If you were doing gas welding with solid core wire they would be swapped. So we're all set up there. Uh, up here on the panel it tells you by thickness we're going to try to weld some uh, 10 gauge which is about two and a half millimeters so I'll set it up for two millimeters and all we have to do is turn the machine on and then dial it in. Now uh, like I said earlier you, you can dial it in as you go. So uh, let's see, on the chart it says for flux core we want 17 and a half and 70 volts. So you can see how it changes. So we can fudge that up just a little bit since 17 and a half is for two millimeter. I think we're going to be about two and a half millimeter. So we're just going to kick it up a little bit and see what we can do here. All right, I'm going to run a short bead on this 10 gauge with the flux core and then we'll switch over to gas and then we'll weld it with uh, the solid core wire. All right, well, I don't do a lot of flux core wiring, wire welding, 
but let's see what it looks like on the back. We can turn the machine up a little bit more. We didn't get quite enough penetration there. So let's dial it up a little bit more. Yeah, they did a better job. The machine is pretty easy to adjust. I did, all I had to do was turn the knob. I had to, didn't have to think about my, uh, my volts and my wire speed at all. I just turned the knob. And so we got pretty good penetration there. We could probably even go a little hotter. Knock the slag off there. That's not looking too bad. All right, I'm gonna have to <laughs> cut another couple of tabs, but uh, yeah, let's switch over to gas and see how it does. Okay, this machine has a nice little feature right here inside the cover. Let's get that on there. Wire feed. So when you're re re uh, reloading a spool, you don't have to waste gas by pulling the trigger or turning your regulator off. You just hit this little button right here. And it just super fast rolls that spool through there until it comes out the other end. Put your tip on and you're ready to go. All right, we're all set up for solid core wire. We've got 030 in there. I'm using the regulator off my Miller. Uh, I've got it plumbed in, exact same hose and fitting and everything, so it went right in, no problem. Did a couple of test beads, looking good, so let's weld that and see how it turns out. Well, looks pretty good. A good penetration. I've got it set about uh, a little bit higher than it's calling for, 18 volts. But it's laying down a nice bead. Let's get some 19 gauge over here, uh, like body, body panel thickness, and uh, we're gonna try to weld it, grind it, and see how it all turns out. All right, guys, I have the welder set as low as it'll go. It's got 030 wire in it. Uh, normally, I would weld 19 gauge with 024 wire, but this is what we have, and I've got uh, part of a fender over here. I cut this piece off and I clamped it back up there and I got it tacked. So let's go ahead and get it welded and see how this thing does. Okay, I did weld it a little fast. It's a small piece. It might have some warpage in there, but uh, it looked pretty good. I burned through right here, but I was able to fill that burn through really easy. So I'm gonna let that cool a little bit and we're gonna get it ground and I'll bring it right back and we'll see how it looks. All right, guys, we got that ground up real nice. Came out really good. Now I did hammer and dolly this. I couldn't help myself, but it came out really nice, basically ready for body filler. And you can see the heat affected zone on the back here. So uh, not too bad at all. And we got full penetration. So that worked out good. So, and I had it up here. I didn't have a heat sink underneath it or anything like some people will do. So that was wide open and just like it would be on a car. So this welder, you know, for 140 bucks, you can do, you know, project work on your car or truck. And, you know, for something that you may only use for this one project or hardly ever use it, the form factor is super small, so you can put it up on the shelf and not worry about it. But for 140 bucks, I mean, you know, I think it's a really good deal. Another 20 bucks for a regulator, and you're ready to go. So I did also weld some 16 gauge with it, and it came out really good. Plenty of penetration. And of course, we did that 10 gauge with the uh, solid core. The flux core, I'm not as good at flux core as I used to be, uh, but it laid down a pretty good bead. So I think this welder is uh, great for a hobbyist or somebody just starting out doesn't want to spend a bunch of money. So I think that came out really well. Okay guys, before we wrap up the review and testing of the Best Dark MiG-145 Gen 9 welder, I wanted to let you know that I did test it on 120 volts. I had it out, I had to tack some uh, railings together on my deck and I had it on a very long extension cord and uh, it, it didn't skip a beat. I was running flux core, the wind was blowing and it did a great job. Once I got it tacked together, I was able to bring it back in the shop and full weld it. So it really helped me out in that regard. Now I specifically today wanted to test it on sheet metal for like body work. 
Now, I know a lot of you guys are on your first project or maybe your only project. And so a really small budget friendly machine like this, I wanted to make sure it could do the work that you guys need to get done. And it does. 140 bucks for the welder, 20 bucks for a regulator, and you're good to go for solid core wire. Now, uh, we did not test it on arc welding or lift TIG. You have to buy the lift, uh, the TIG torch separate, excuse me, and arc welding, that's fairly straightforward. I'm sure it can do it, no problem. But for the money, I think it's a good machine and welding you know, body panels back together. I did it just fine and I'm sure you guys can too. So I'm really happy to get this thing tested out. Maybe it'll work out great for you guys as well. Thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Mash that bell and drop me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next one.